Howdy, cadre. Uh, warnings. I... I am still awake hours later. It's like three in the morning. I... I, I'm I'm just mad. I'm just mad at the world. I I don't like conflict. I've spent a oh jeez. Where was that? The other side of the fence. Yep. Okay. Not interested, sir. Oh, you're coming over. Oh, you're coming over, are ya? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! I don't like conflict. Okay. Then why are you running around the city at night, huh? I may just be taking it out on you guys. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't want to deal with multiple boom booms. Um, I do want to go north just slightly more. I'm off the map. Okay. I'm back on the map. Okay. Uh, yeah, conflict. I normally just avoid it. In fact, it's led me to pride myself on my forgiveness and my patience. Alright, the audio is a little bit too loud. I think that's why I'm yelling. And priding myself on my patience and forgiveness has led me to allow myself to be victimized, ignored, disrespected, uh, etc. <laughs> And I don't... I mean, I, I have been trying recently to unpack... ...my own biases. But I don't... Yeah, no, no. Nope. Okay, well, I can cut through there now. Um... Hey, yep. Alright, is my pack full? Nope. So I picked that stuff up. It. I think it was laggy. What? Okay, I'm going south. Good. All right. Um, I don't. I don't want to get distracted by that right now. I've been disrespected enough. Hey, 
And, and here I'm trying to speak generally because I'm trying to parallel multiple conflicts that I've had. Um, that had have have made me feel devalued. Um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't normally think along the lines of, of value or worth. I don't, I don't feel I have a lot of social power or financial power. Or um, even stability, or and and I think my the self worth that I do have is rather abstract, and in some ways um, more more humble. And more healthy and balanced than most Americans. Okay, all right, all right. Um, in a lot of my relationships, I've kind of accepted, maybe even expected, a submissive role. And... Recently, I've had some encounters, interactions, revelations. What is this? Who are you? I do not accept your intrusion. Hey! Yeah, no, yep. Hey, whoa, what? Okay, yep. My... Okay, all right. Uh, and it's daylight, okay. Good morning, sunshine. So... And, and this is included me getting the middle finger and yelled at for trying to promote public safety. Uh, it has involved me getting the middle finger and yelled at for looking like a cop. It has included being called a racist based on hearsay. It has included uh, getting hate speech thrown at me on Facebook in violation of their terms and policies. And here I'm speaking about a specific individual who's a friend of a friend. And my, my friend is someone I met through 
Facebook and have a, a somewhat tenuous relationship with um, it, it, it oscillates uh, between mutual respect and judgment. Uh, but this is a person who has made it clear that they do not unfriend people. Um, they are somewhat a, a social influencer. I, I don't I don't want to confuse that phrase with social media influencers, but they they use verbal persuasion um, to try and subtly modify behavior. Uh, anyways, I don't even want to get too distracted on them because the point is their friend who is a a bigot, a racist, a misogynist, and I'm not I'm not even using names because the, whoa I've just walked to the end of the city. I didn't know I didn't know I could do that. Um I, I don't have lava, do I? Uh, no, ten empty buckets. Okay. Wow. Um, well, this is obviously a future area of development. The highway just stops. That's interesting. So, uh, gravel. Rain. Um, oh, you guys fighting each other now. Oh, hey, guy. No, I'm not taking it from anyone today. Uh, there's a whole stream of them. Why? Why? Why, guys? Just because of the rain? You guys are all... Hey, aww. Interesting. Edge of the world. Well, edge of the city. Well, let's let's walk along that a bit. You know, I bet the warp points are are in the center of city districts to keep you away from the edges in casual in, oh, anyways, so What? I'm going south? Okay. I, I don't know what that means. Uh, well, I guess I'm on the Facebook story a little bit. So, to get... Wow, there's backstory, too. Um... I've pulled the Karen. Let's let's enter this into this. This this is the only person I have ever reported posts to Facebook about, and it started um, a month or two ago. 
during the pandemic. Um, kind of as an experiment. I'm not even on the map anymore. Um, this person made it clear. Well, I just, I didn't like his tactics. He... He has led me to do a lot of research on things like logical fallacies. Um, I I never took debate, and in fact, it's it's maybe one of the things I regret not studying in high school. Um, I don't I don't think I would have enjoyed it in college but I feel like it's a f uh, well, why aren't I getting back on the map I guess this spreads off the edge now do I want to explore the edge of the city or the edge of the map um I think taking a debate in high school I'm going north, that's why. Okay. Now I'm going west. Um, it I, I, I think I missed out on a few things. Uh, possibly. One being more focused rigor on logic, more confidence in presenting arguments, um, what else was I thinking of? Well, and a, a better understanding of logical fallacies, which is why I started into that. And a lot of them have Latin names, like ad hominem fallacy, which if you don't study it, you not only miss the terms, but you also can lose the concepts. And an ad hominem fallacy is when you... Argue against someone by attacking the person rather than the argument. And it's a common tactic of bullies uh, to take the approach, uh, you know, when you can't, when you don't have a good rebuttal to a point they've made. you just call them dumb. Or some other insult. And, and a lot of those insults actually fall into the realm of hate speech. And this person caused me to actually start reading about Facebook's terms of service. Um, because really on the forum of Facebook... In, in a lot... Part of it, too, is by by pledging an oath. Am I going south now? Um, no, now I should be going north. Okay. Um, 
by pledging an oath to defend the Constitution, I've been thinking more about the Constitution. And a lot of people have a fundamental misunderstanding of the amendments, the Bill of Rights. Um, the Constitution initially was a set of instructions on how laws would be made and how the government would be uh, how governmental powers would be distributed how um, you know and a lot of the basic tenets of our system of government that the executive branch would enforce the laws the legislative branch would create the laws and, ch and the judicial branch would interpret the laws, clarify solve disputes, stuff like that. Um, the Bill of Rights was, I, th I think, the first ten amendments Which, yeah, they give rights to the people, but in a way that's a little bit misleading. The... Oh, I moved back in too quickly. Don't rightly care that much, other than... Hey! Pick, pick, pick up what I can. Okay. Um, no, no, no. No, 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 to both of you. Okay. The... Uh, most of the first ten amendments give rights to the people by limiting the powers of government. And... What's kind of become popularized... Oh, good, I'm on the map. Um, so I'm facing south. Maybe I should sleep. So the First Amendment doesn't say... Anybody can do and say whatever they want. What it says is that the government can't pass laws that would infringe on the rights of individuals to speak freely, petition the government, practice their religion. It's... Oh, hey, cool. It still allows... I mean, it's kind of an inherent right that you can do and say whatever you want. But the limiting factor of that in a, in a society... is that you face the consequences of those actions. I mean, we all have the ability to lie, to spread misinformation. Um, to have crazy beliefs and voice them. But you face those consequences. If you 
and one of the common, I mean, this used to be a common go-to example. If you yell fire in a crowded theater, um, you're creating a panic in a way that's an act of terrorism that you can cause harm to people. And if, if something you do or say causes harm to people, you, you face, this is a mall. You face the consequences of that. Um, people can get mad. Uh, they can, you know, sue you in in court for public endangerment. Um, the venue can uh, kick you out and ban you from coming back. Um, there's all sorts of possible repercussions in that sort of scenario. And, and, and likewise, you know, there's, you can be sued for uh, libel or slander or, um, I don't know how to get out of here now. I uh, don't want to do that. I guess I need stairs down. This is where I came in, isn't it? In, anyways, I'm, I'm getting way off topic. The point is... That the laws of the country... Restrict the government from taking away your... Freedoms... Well, those are snazzy looking. Um, to speak publicly. But we also have the idea of contract law that that's a private concern. So if you go onto somebody's property, you, you, you could be violating their right to privacy. They control their space. They own their property. That's part of property rights. If you go to a theater, you can be uh, expected by the owners of that property to follow certain guidelines like not endangering the public or causing a disturbance or all right where okay I want to head this way I guess um, and what I'm trying to get back around to is Facebook which for all purposes as things stand, is a private company that's maintaining a social space and has the right um, to dictate the terms of use for that space. So it's not truly public. Facebook is not a public uh, utility. Um, it's not a public square. It's not a public space. It's certainly not a way to petition the government or um, a place where one has an expectation of free speech or uh, other rights granted by the First Amendment. It's an ideal that we aspire to, but it's kind of like you're on Facebook's property 
uh, they have a right to set terms of service and enforce it. Anyway, so th this guy. Uh, has has decided that I'm his enemy, and and I have a role in that. Um, our argument started when he was actively conflating protesters with rioters. He was trying to paint the entire protest movements that were occurring in response to the death of George Floyd as uh, violent people, terrorists essentially, with political, causing violence and property discussion, d destruction for political ends. And I know from watching, ooh, Ferris wheel. I know from watching a lot of video footage, uh, both on mainstream media and stuff shared through social media, as well as attending local uh, protests primarily to observe and secondarily to document for personal reasons. Um, that a vast majority of the protesters are practicing um, peaceful demonstrations, participating in peaceful demonstrations. Some of them are practicing civil disobedience, um, which, you know, normally is the breaking of local ordinances to raise attention, um, you know, stuff like walking in public streets, which can disrupt traffic, but there's, you know, largely due to the civil rights movement, there's, there's kind of a progression that uh, organized protesters will follow of petitioning the government directly if ignored, speaking publicly and raising public awareness, if ignored, um, starting to make people uncomfortable. Um, and most of these organized protesters have a basic sense of human decency and aren't looking to burn buildings cool or hurt anyone and the people who do fall into several categories they might be uh, people that just want to hurt others or watch the world burn um Eh. They might be people who are just acting on emotion, that are just so angry that nothing's changing, that they go to extremes. And they're, you know, they're violating laws, and they're extremists. Um, and, and some of them are agent provocateurs who... want to get the police to respond or um, accomplish other <laughs> other things with their violence. Uh, intimidation, uh, social unrest, anyways. 
so I and and I've gotten tired of this guy, but at the same time, it's become very clear that he's gotten tired of me, and he's someone who just uh. resorts to ad hominem attacks rather than arguing positions um, and in some in some areas I don't have soft spots like a common tactic between men is to question each other's manhood and I I've I long ago abandoned the idea of defending my manhood per se. I'm more interested in humanity than manhood. And I I certainly see differences in uh between the genders. But, but they're, they're differences of scale, not... And, and they're, it requires generalization and stereotyping to, to even talk about it, usually. I mean, you can focus on physical things, it, like genitalia, but as soon as you start that, if you have a broad enough understanding, um, you have to admit that there are biological exceptions to any rule you know there's there's people who chromosomally are are not male or female and you can focus more on outward appearance and what's on your birth certificate and um, all sorts of stuff but then there's there's still strange exceptions and, and I, I don't, yeah, I don't care about a lot of that. I try to look past that. Um, it, anyways, this, this person revealed himself, hey, Dolphin, as, this seems to be the southern limit. Oh. I could I could build out on the pier. That might be interesting. I, I'll come back later. Um, this person revealed himself to be a bigot. And by that, that's, that's a word I looked up several times. A bigot is someone who dismisses other people's viewpoints. Um, he's revealed himself to be a misogynist, uh, meaning sexist. He's revealed himself to be racist by saying things like, uh, I, you know, I, the only Jews I met, I worked for for a short time, but I got out of that situation fast. Um, okay. So you've been isolated from them, and you, you based your opinion on an entire race or culture uh, because of your interactions with one couple? I don't know where we're going. There's torches down here. That's strange. Um, that was just a specific example that came up at one point, but, and he had a weird tactic of, of, like, 
focusing on race, focusing on race, focusing on race, and then if if you say something in defense of that race, or or you know to point out white privilege or something like that, then he'd attack you for being racist or for for bringing up race or um. I mean, I figured it out pretty quickly, but it was kind of annoying because I, I would be trying for a long time to focus on constitutional rights or excessive use of force by police, um, and, and I wouldn't be talking about race. In fact, part of my point was to defend the Constitution, and part of my point I mean, one of the reasons I support Black Lives Matter is because I think one of the big problems we have in our culture is that race has been conflated with uh, an idea of class or, or focused on as a distraction away from class. And when we talk about um, the discretion that police use in their monitoring and enforcement activities, it's not just... I, I don't think it's just about race. It's also about class. It's about a perception of value And one of the ways police often judge people is by the appearance of their car or their clothing. Um, and and I've, I've noticed this in my personal life. And in a way, this is some place where my, I, I'm aware of having white pri privilege because... You know, I own a bunch of clothes, and I notice that people will treat me differently based on my appearance. And I imagine that skin color adds another layer to this that can't be removed or changed. And so I have the luxury of being able to, you know, put an, a nice suit on and gain more respect from almost everybody in our culture. And I imagine that for people of color, just to speak broadly, um, and it, it depends on what people and what tone of skin they have, but certainly um, Hispanics are judged harshly by some people, and African Americans are judged harshly by some people, and all of these things will layer um, if you don't speak in the right way, you know, American English, and if you don't look the right way, um, and if you don't dress the right way and compose yourself the right way, um, you, you get varying judgments from varying people immediately based on all that. Anyways, and, and this guy... Another tactic of his is to put words in your mouth. Um, and I forget the name. This is another type of fallacy recognized in debate circles um, that you... Straw man. Straw man argument. Um, 
I, th I think that's correct. That you don't respond to what they say, or not precisely what they say, but what you do is you build up what they say into a more extreme version, and then attack that. And this is very common in the current political landscape between conservatives and liberals. Oh, hey, here's some uh, red redstone. What are we doing? Ender Pearl mini game. I I don't know if the mini games work for me. Um, I don't know if you need to install stuff. Anyways, uh. Yeah, and this this guy likes to straw man like crazy. So if he's in blind support of police, and I I argue that police powers need to be thought about, or um, some of their discretion needs to be taken away. That they need to be held accountable for excessive use of, of force, things along those lines. Um, that they shouldn't be using tear gas or rubber, rubber bullets or um, you, you know, j just to focus down more. I might say we need to demilitarize the police, and then later he'll accuse me of wanting to abolish the police. And those are certainly um, very different arguments. And I have almost never called the police. Let's see. I've, my car was stolen once, I called the police about that, um, I've also called the non-emergency number in town, oh, that failed, yep, okay, um, for uh, a, a kind of a, a property management dispute with the neighbor's landlord, but only after my landlord told me for years that he'd take care of it himself. And what I'm talking about is a collapsed fence on the edge of the property that once damaged my property because I was coming home at night and I pulled into my usual parking spot on my own property that I rent and um, there's a lot of guys and popped a tire and it cost me 60 bucks which I really you know can't afford just to be throwing money at other people's negligence. And so I com I told my uh, Oh, I got a bow ready. I told my landlord and he said, "Well, that fence I believe belongs to the neighbor." And I said, well, should... Oh, hey. Uh, I don't have a sword now. Okay. I said, well, should I call the city about it then? And he said, no, no, it'd be easier if I just take care of it. And then he ignored it for, you know, six months, and I brought it up again. He ignored it for another year brought it up again and 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 finally after this pattern repeated for a while I decided you're um 
No, that isn't even the story. I finally got him to take care of it. I finally complained long enough that he brought a truck out and hauled it off. And what happened was within a couple weeks, the neighbor started storing appliances there where the fence had been. I, I'm getting way off track. I always do this, but anyways, my point was that I, you know, I've only turned to the police kind of as a last resort um, when there were clear violations of law that affected me and my property personally. Ow. I'm glad I got off the fence. And and I think I yeah, I I don't think I'm a Karen because that has always been my attitude that turning to the police should be a kind of a last and a last resort and and part of that's because I understand the excessive use of force thing and the tendency for them to play power games and uh, sometimes the results being more severe than the infraction and um, a desire to solve problems for myself human to human rather than uh, turning to authority anyways but this this guy on Facebook there is one specific oops okay well we'll go this way there was one specific disagreement that led to a long back and forth and I'm talking like 200 comments back and forth on the same thread of this mutual friends page so nobody else was paying attention by the end of this um, I didn't even think our mutual friend was really paying too much attention and reading everything and I was just staying engaged because during the pandemic I had nothing better to do and I, I found the whole thing curious and a good learning experience because I had never had arguments like this um, in the boys' locker room or whatever growing up. And so I felt like I was kind of learning about how males interact with each other in a way that I hadn't before. All of my personal relationships have been more uh, mutually supportive and positive in general. So... But he, yeah, call me names, question my manhood, question my sexual orientation, you know, make claims about what I believe that just weren't true. And, yeah, I, do, I don't even take that stuff personally, but I started to worry about how other people might perceive me based on his claims and slander. And I always tried to just, you know, when he responds, when he called me all right, and here comes a bad word. I'm using it to explain.
when he called me a pussy. I called him a misogynist. Or maybe the first time I called him sexist. Because I know that 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 form of name calling is is based on insecurities and disrespect for women. Um, at one point, he said, kind of out of the blue, are you a feminist? Um, which was unrelated to our discussion up to that point. I think this is before he called me that word. And my response to that was, I prefer the term gender egalitarian, or just egalitarian in, in general. Because that's that's something I figured out a long time ago is that I I had a discomfort with the term feminist because I think the term itself is sexist. It it is based on the word feminine, so it but but I've come to realize that it's not it shouldn't be interpreted as sexist against men. Much like Black Lives Matter, it's combating an overarching uh, imbalance. It's an attempt at rebalancing an imbalance, and it, it focuses on the, the marginalized and, and disrespected for that reason. To say th this group, who you belittle, deserves equal treatment. Certainly under the law. And to, to call a man a woman or – and it's even – it's more layered than that because to refer to someone if, – if you re refer to a woman as just one of their body parts, you're dismissing the rest. You're saying you're not a full human. You're – you're just the one part that distinguishes you from the other half of the species. Um, but it, 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 and that's that's probably worse than calling a man. Uh, the same because you are objectifying and reducing them to one part of their body so you're just dismissing the rest of their humanity um, when it's used against me it just seems nonsensical and and I've I've come to understand that yeah it may be a personal attack and it may be based on the idea of questioning someone's manhood you know trying to deny them of that but at the same time it's it's belittling to all women. Um, anyways, I've, I've gone way off, way off, and this, this one's way too long, but, yeah, that was one of the battles, 
so he's he's led me to actually read through Facebook's terms of service and I've re reported him a few times not because I personally feel offended um, I, I put up with that the first many times he did it to me uh, without responding and in this way I you know I tried to reason with him um, I tried to use humor to point out the, how problematic his his speech was um, I, I tried to appeal to reason and logic and a uh, sense of humanity um, and and I got I got tired of it but in some of our arguments he claims to support law and order but then he dis he engages in this disorderly contact conduct uh, a form of um, hate speech really a form of soft terrorism in a way that he's he's trying to modify my social behavior through personal attacks and uh, and and silence me and keep me out of this semi-public space uh, just by yelling louder than me or uh, being more offensive than me and scare me off. And I was standing my ground in a way as an ex experiment. Um, it's easier to do. And I, I was trying not to resort to name-calling in response. And that's why I was doing things. Like if he called me a word that... Uh, it was based on femininity, I would call him a misogynist. And if he ignored my argument or uh, said something dismissive of my perspective, I would call him a bigot. And if he attacked me, um, ah, what are other examples? The word opprobrium came up. I learned it because of him and looking at research. He was trying to make the argument that um, the only form of harassment is physical. But verbal harassment is a form of harassment. And... I brought up the word opprobrium and suggested he look it up uh, after he shared a definition of harassment that ignored verbal harassment. And opprobrium is specifically verbal harassment. It's uh, all right. I've gone in circles several times. What? And I've fully explored. What is this, Asheville? Hunter's Point was the... Uh, I don't know. So, anyways, um, this evening... Our mutual friend had posted a... Just an image, a photograph of Trump masks. They were just kind of uh, flesh-colored. Not even really Caucasian flesh or Trump flesh. It was kind of just a, a normal tan or, or beige, a plasticky uh, t 
tan color. Um, and it, it's it probably was before paint was applied or other coloration pigment. And, and they were just stacked up. Uh, probably 20 to 30 deep. or They varied. There were several stacks of them. Anyways. I just commented V is for Vendetta. Which was a reference to a movie that takes place in 2020 where there's a global pandemic and people rise up against authoritarian oppression. It's set in uh, Europe. Oh, that lag. And, uh, okay. It uses Guy Fox masks. Not Trump masks, but, um. The movie's called V for Vendetta. And I said V is for and Vendetta. Um. To try and distinguish it slightly. And I don't know what the purpose of the masks were or what the purpose of the post was, but it reminded me of V is for Vendetta and the ideas of trying to conceal your identity into a group um, for some political end. And yeah, I, those masks could be used by Trump supporters or Trump protesters. I... I can imagine so I didn't know what the goal of all, all that was but anyways this this friend of a friend's response was to call me the C word another reference to female genitalia and I said the P word before it's certainly similar and this was the first time he called me the C word. And I just didn't feel like uh, engaging with him in the same way I had before. And there were times before where he got uh, obscene enough that I had reported him to Facebook and I was also emotional uh, Facebook the last time I reported him I probably reported five of his comments or posts and uh, Facebook removed two of those five and and said that the, the other three didn't meet their threshold or whatever but tonight, um, he, I, I, all I had said was V is for Vendetta, and it wasn't in response to him. He wasn't around. Uh, I was the first commenter on the image. But he just jumped in with the C word, directed at me, I'm sure, because it was in response to my comment. But, and he... Yeah, he hit reply. My name appeared. Um, so yeah, I, I pulled the Karen and reported him to Facebook, and it was removed immediately. I think they... Um, I think they have a word check system. So if you're on a list of offensive words... If you've used an offensive word, it's the comment is removed immediately. Um, if it, if you're not on the list, or if you spell it differently or something, it'll go through a review process. And once a human gets around to 
seeing it, um, they can make a determination. Uh, And yeah, I even got a little bit of pushback from my friend who supports free speech, and I, I support free speech. Um, I, I just... I'm tired of this guy, and uh, I, I'm now attempting to discourage him from even interacting with me along those lines in part because someone else might find it offensive and I just think it's ridiculous that this is his go-to tactic and that he refuses to learn um, that he's on Facebook using Facebook, and this is a Facebook policy that he agreed to when he signed up. Uh, and our mutual friend came in and said at one point that we were playing good cop, bad cop, and that he was leaning into his role of, as bad cop, but that doesn't necessarily make me right cop and him wrong cop. And my response to that was, this is just a civilian dispute. The only cop round here is Facebook. They can explain their policy to him. And I, you know, I got more pushback and I went on to say that, um, I support law and order, and I've tried to in engage in an orderly manner, um, but I also believe in higher powers, and they're the ones that have determined, you know, Facebook is the ones that sets the policy for, for the the platform that they provide. Anyways, yep, yeah, that's a lot of defending myself, and I, I don't, I don't think I'm accomplishing some grand thing. I don't think of myself as a social justice warrior. I don't think um, I'm even gonna cause him really to to question himself or make major changes but honestly my hope is that he'll just leave me alone a little bit more because I don't I don't want to resort to blocking him so that I can't see what he says I you know when he calls me names or says stupid stuff uh it, it doesn't hurt me in a way I need to protect myself from. I'm in control of my emotions. And I, I don't even, you know, react as emotionally or carelessly as he does. Um, it's become clear to me that he loses his ability to think logically as he gets angry and just resorts to name calling and um, attacks in whatever manner he can come up with. And yeah, I've tried to be patient and he takes advantage of that. Um, I've noticed he really wants to have the last word and by kind of verbally sparring with him on Facebook, he's occupying my time when, 
And if I have nothing better to do, that's fine. But um, I, I'm also not interested in it because I know I'm accomplishing nothing. Even on those long threads, I'm not even um, really defending myself against anybody I care about. It started out that way, that I didn't want other people reading the thread to misjudge me or judge me too harshly. But once we got into it, I'm like, nobody else is going to read this, except maybe our mutual friend. And uh, he's, he's made it clear he doesn't really want to take sides or... Um, engage in that activity too much. So that's, that's a bunch of stuff. Um, hope you enjoyed the rant. I, I'm fine. I, you know, I accept that there's a little bit of a Karen in me. Um, but I, I think part of the social phenomenon of the attacks on the Karens is to keep people from appealing to an authority and it, you know I'll be the first to say that turning to you know asking for a manager for petty disputes and stuff is is ridiculous and you know an employee isn't there to take your abuse it's part of their job to be polite and courteous and responsive but Every human being has a limit, and they don't need to, to be there for abuse and disrespect. And, yeah, half the time, when Karen's ask for a manager, the half of the time that they're out of line or being abusive themselves, the manager sides with the employee. They see what's going on quickly. Um, anyway. That was just one thing. I'm also working on... St oops, working on standing up for my rights as a tenant. I did it again. But that cannot be part of this episode. Insert catchphrase. Eek! Insert catchphrase. No, 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 okay. I thought the lag had me that time. No, 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 There it was. That was the lag. Well, I got more armor out of the deal. Sorry, admin and J. Dager. Uh, the armor stand blew up, so I can't even put it back. Ah, I did it again. Come on. Come on. No. Yeah. Insert the axe in your... Oh, in your chest. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Don't, com don't continue the cycle. Hey, there's an egg. Reminds me of a Kavaline. 
Hey, two chickens! I can start breeding you guys once you grow up. That's incest. Insert catchphrase here.